In this screencast, we'll discuss units and the international or SI system of units. Why are units important? Well, it turns out that specifying a number without specifying the units really means that we're not giving any information at all. So, for example, we'll look at the Mars Climate Orbiter. This mission costs about $125 million and unfortunately it crashed. And the reason it crashed, it was later discovered, is that the contractor that was working with the government and, the, uh, and NASA were using two different sets of units. Uh, for the unit of force, one group was using the pound as a unit of force, so basically the weight uh, of, a, of a pound of stuff is the force of one pound. Another group was using the scientific unit, the Newton, and they're not the same. And so uh, the orbiter ended up going much too fast in the, in the atmosphere of Mars, uh, in the, much too low as well, and so it uh, basically burned up inside the Martian atmosphere and the whole mission was, was lost, costing years and years of work and a lot of money. So. Uh, the first thing to remember is that if we write down a number that has units without units, it's wrong. So we always want to make sure we get our units right. And we'll find out later that using unit analysis is often a way to find out if we've done our algebra correctly. So it's really important in a course like chemistry to get good with using units. The basic units for the SI system are the kilogram, I'll write these out as well. It's giving you the symbol. You'll almost never write out the whole unit. You usually use the symbol over here. The meter and the second. And so we have mass, we have length, and we have time. We're already familiar with the second. If you want a general idea of the kilogram and the meter, this is very, very roughly three feet. Just over three feet. And a kilogram on the surface of the Earth, that's the same as the force exerted by gravity on of 2.2 pounds. That's an approximation. So why don't we just say that's an approximation here. You get a rough idea for what, what a kilogram is. So those are the most important units for the SI system. There are other units that are composite. That means they can be broken down into kilograms, meters, and seconds. And so one example of a composite unit is the joule. And the joule is a unit of energy. And how is it a composite unit? Well, it turns out a joule is equal to a kilogram meter squared per second squared. And if you ever have trouble remembering this, there's an easy way to remember it. And that is, if we write down Einstein's famous equation E equals mc squared, And this is probably Einstein's most famous equation. And let me annotate this so you can see what the terms stand for. E stands for energy. M stands for mass. And C is the speed of light. So for our purposes, all we have to know is that E is energy, M is mass, and C is the speed of light. Because once we have that, we plug in energy has units of joules, mass has units of kilograms, the speed of light, like any speed, it could be put in meters per second, and look what we have. We have kilograms times meters per second divided by second squared. So this equation is an easy way, once you've memorized that, to remember what a joule is. And for the first part of Chemistry 127, these are the units that matter.
kilograms, seconds, meters, and joules. A second part of the SI system that's important is the use of prefixes. So oftentimes in chemistry, we'll talk about something really, really small, like the mass of an atom. Or we'll talk about something really, really big, like the frequency of an x-ray. And we don't want to write a number with all these zeros. We could use scientific notation, but prefixes are a way to avoid even using scientific notation. So for instance, if we have, uh, say, 10 to the third of something, or 1,000, we could call that, we can use the prefix K, which stands for kilo. So for instance, 1,000 meters is a kilometer. 10 to the sixth, we use the abbreviation capital M, which stands for mega. So uh, you may have seen that a radio station might have a frequency that is mega, megahertz, which means uh, 10 to the 6 cycles per second. We have 10 to the 9th. And you also may have seen this in something like a kilobyte or a megabyte, right? So this is, you commonly see these abbreviations uh, when you're looking at the size of a, of a computer file, it might be a certain number of kilobytes or megabytes, or if it's really big, it might be gigabytes. So that's 10 to the ninth. And the last one that we're going to look at is 10 to the 12th, capital T for Terra. And you may have seen this actually if you buy, uh, at least in 2016, this is the typical size of a computer hard drive, it usually is in uh, roughly one or maybe two terabytes. Okay. All right, on the other hand, we might be looking at something small. So if we've got something that's one one thousandth of the original unit, we'd use the abbreviation M, which stands for milli, ten to the negative six is micro, and we use a Greek letter mu for that. 10 to the negative ninth is n for nano. And certainly you've heard that in the idea of nanotechnology. So that's things that have a length scale of 10 to the negative ninth meters. And then there's two more that we need to do, negative 12 and 10 to the negative 15. That is going to be P for Pico, and F for Femto. OK, so now these are all the SI prefixes, and you do need to memorize these. And as I said, it helps if you can tie this into your daily life. right? You've maybe seen uh, file sizes left it, listed on your um, uh, if you have some computer files, they might be kilobytes, megabytes, or gigabytes. And then you might have a hard drive that's either a lot of gigabytes or one or two terabytes. You maybe are familiar with the millimeter. That's one one thousandth of a meter, so a millimeter is about the thickness of a penny. Uh, a micrometer, it's much, much smaller, so something maybe like the, the uh, radius of a human hair might be in micrometers. Nanometers, the length of a chemical bond is about a tenth of a nanometer. Picometers, now we're talking about um, something that's even smaller than the length of a chemical bond. Since a chemical bond, you could think of uh, the radius of an atom might be a few hundred picometers. And then femtometers, that would be maybe the size of the nucleus. So these are very, very, we can use this to denote very, very small things. So like I said, you do need to memorize these prefixes.